All right. Good afternoon po sa lahat. Good afternoon to everyone. Mayong hapon sa tanan. Labi na sa itong mga subuanon. In behalf of the Cebu City Cultural and Historical Affairs Office, my name is Patricia, and I will be moderating today's fourth Lapu-Lapu Day online lecture. It is a great pleasure and honor for all of us to be here. And we have something very um, surprising and very interesting for all of us today because we are going to be introducing to you a lot of interesting speakers who will talk about the significance of Lapu-Lapu. As I've heard recently, um, he's been very, very, very uh, relevant the past few months, the past month, especially the month of April, um, following the celebration of the 500th, uh, 500th um, victory at Mactan. And so, Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome everyone to our online session. We move on into another um, very significant and very um, well-spoken um, speaker all the way from the faraway land of Luzon or wherever he may be right now. And this is the beauty of having things online because we never know where, our pe where people are and we still can come together in celebrations like this. And so I'd like to call on and introduce to you guys a wonderful professor who teaches history at De La Salle University, Manila. He has a, a BA and MA in history, graduate and a PhD, and he is a PhD student in UP Diliman. He is the author of the book Bonifacio, Ang Una Pangulo Ang Bayani Biographies of Andres Bonifacio. He was an original bottom liner in the bottom line with Boyabunda. Historical Consultant of History with Lord Teleseries Ilustrado and Katipunan, the host of Xiao Time segment at PTV4, and he's one of the most active public historians on Philippine television. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Michael Ch Carlson Xiao Chua. Makasaysayang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Maayong hapon sa inyo, Tanan, Cebu. And I thank you, Patricia. Uh, I thank you, Brile. I thank you, uh, Chow, Cebu City, Culture, Cultural and Historical Affairs Office. You know, it's like Chow and Xiao. Right? So thank you uh, for uh, giving me the opportunity to join you in this official commemoration of the city government of Cebu, of all people, I do not know why you chose me to talk to you about the Battle of Mactan, but I am uh, accepting the honor that you have given me. Yes, Patricia. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul, for joining us. And it is a great pleasure to have you. Actually, I believe Vinina Magkasekailangam, it doesn't you don't really have to be from Cebu to talk about things that are of Cebu or of significance of Cebu, because what is significant in one part of our country is significant to the whole part of the country yes, to the whole definitely. country itself. So well, thank you for being open. And I think <laughs> yeah, <laughs> naman po. I mean, you know. More than being Cebuano, more than all of that, we are all Filipinos. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about this celebration because it just not it just does not um it's not concentrated in being Cebuano, but it is used as a platform or a base for the rest of history of how we've all sprung from our contact with the outside world, kumbaga, di ba? Or other right. other um nationalities yun nga right. so mabuhi, um, we're really mabuhi. looking forward <laughs> yes yes we're really looking forward to what you have to say um are you uh we are going to give the floor to you now and we can talk about uh the significance of the battle of Mactan since we are in line with this topic right now with the 500 years celebration of the battle of Mactan and it's got a lot to do, you know, like here in Cebu, it's making a lot of noise, it's making a lot of, um, it's making a lot of headlines and it's, it's being a topic around, but I think there's still a need to reinforce 
the understanding of how it happened and what what really happened then. So can you give us a little bit of a background there, sir? Ah, wow. Thank you for your uh, question, Patricia. No? So remember that the we have to basically understand why the Battle of Mactan was fought. And you have to go back to why Magellan was here. Okay, there are uh, there are opinions about uh, Magellan uh, not really aiming for colonization. You see, but I think I respect the people who say that. But I believe that the mere fact that Magellan came here, uh, not just for spices, really, but to map. The I mean to not just to circumnavigate the world and look at the spices, but to actually map places to include in their division of the world. Remember that the Pope divided the world uh, to the Treaty of Tordesillas. So what I'm saying here is that uh, since they divided the world for for conquest for colonialism, then there's a an automatically. That was one of the goals. And even if they were just, they wanted to trade, the mere fact that they're mapping these places, uh, they are mapping them for future target to colonize. So that's one clarification that I would like to make. Second was that uh, I, I, I would like to emphasize here that uh, people are saying, you know, Filipinos, uh, they were, we killed our first tourists. Uh, uh, of course, that's a joke, but uh, it, it doesn't look so well. It doesn't look so well if that's the case. But you have to understand that the first uh, part, and I will not talk too much about this, but I would really like to emphasize, and maybe because I've spoken about this for, for many times already, uh, can I screen share so that we will have a beautiful, uh, yeah? You tell me if I go ahead. Speak. Yeah, thank you. Host disabled. Yes, thank you so much. There you have it. Uh -huh, there. Okay. You know when they came here, uh, Magellan overestimated the time that he's going to circumnavigate the world. So what happened was they 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 saw nine, they saw one hundred days of ocean, and they have no food already. They're eating very bad food. They were hungry, they were thirsty, and they came to Giwan, Nomonhon Island, uh, Giwan Eastern Samar today, and our ancestors saw them two days after they saw Samar Island. So the famous Yoyoy song, no? Uh, Bisdak, you know, remember Bisdak, ano? Uh, on March 16, 1521, when Philippines was discovered by Magellan. But okay. in fact, if you're going to look at it, it was our ancestors who discovered them. They were hungry, they were thirsty, and what happened? After a few days, the, our, our ancestors returned. There was, they did not understand anything. It was true. They did not understand the speaking they have done. Because Castilla did at Waray Waray Man. But did not, that, that did not matter. They returned with food. As, as Madam Luella Alex and Feliz Prudente Santa Maria would tell you. And uh, so we were nice. We were humane. We did not choose uh, who we're going to um, be good at or be good with. We did not choose race, color, creed. Why? Because we were adept at the trade. We knew how to uh, entertain our visitors. Uh, the hospitality of the Filipino I do not want to call it just that. It's pakikipagkapwa tao. Right? So, the good thing about it was, and this is where I'm going to insert now, the context of the Philippine Islands, before it was called the Philippines, of course, during the, um, the Villalobos expedition, was that the places here in the Philippines were what we call tabuan or what we call uh, entrepo of trade, meaning, like for example, Cebu. Cebu doesn't produce uh, a lot of crops. 
So they have no produce. They have no large produce to to spread trade, to spread in the trade. But they were the Cebu was entrepot, meaning the goods of other countries, different countries around Cebu and the Philippines at that time were being dropped in Cebu. So Raja Humabon, the the Cebuano chieftain, Raya Humabon in Pigapeta Sakao. He he was in, in, in the standard operating procedure was to ask taxes if they want to if the if the Spaniards wanted to trade with them, and of course Magellan, as I told you, their supplies were out. One of their ships where the supplies were, you know, left them, and what happened was they did not have anything that Cebuanos need. The Cebuanos have everything they wanted. And so, what happened? Lapul, uh, Magellan, so that he can convince Raja Humabon to, you know, give him, to, to let him trade with them, he, according to Professor Bani Biernas, my friend, took out his very important diplomatic uh, secret weapon. And what is this, uh, Patricia? No? Simple. Magellan said to Raja Humabon, we are representatives of the greatest, mightiest king in the world. And that's the Spanish king. We will make you his representative. Raja Humabon. And because you have the representative, you will be king to other datus. Uh, other datos who will submit to you, like in the European system, and we will protect you against your enemies. So that was the promise of Magellan. Huh? Eh, ano nangyari? What happened? Now, when that was, of course, in the process, they had the Sandugo, which is an, 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 an agreement of brotherhood. Raja Humabon believed Magellan and, and treated him as a brother. We will give our part to this. But Magellan, of course, did not understand. It was just a ritual for him. It did not mean brotherhood. It did not mean anything to him. It was just being nice. And so, but what, what, what Raja Umabon did was he, he agreed to become a Christian. And that is when, of course, when they were being baptized, 800 Cebuanos, uh, the Hara of Cebu, the Queen of Cebu, who was named Juana, noticed the Santo Nino. You see, Patricia, that's why the Santo Nino, uh, a lot of you call, call him the Batubalani sa Gugma, the Magnet of Love, because the Queen was magnetized by the beauty of the Santo Nino and asked for the child. And Magellan gave it gave, gave, gave uh, the holy child Reina Juana and uh, Magellan then thought oh I was able to uh, convince 800 people to, baptize, to be baptized that's one the other thing was that you know they cured one of the one of the people of Cebu who was dying they were able to cure, cure, cure by, by, by letting him drink something. Magellan's man was able to cure this man. And so, Raja Uma, uh, Magellan actually felt that um, this guy, uh, no, no, Magellan actually felt that he was actually invincible. That he can fight anyone. He's, he 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 can he's, you know, he he cannot be beaten. And then of course enter Lapu Lapu. Lapu Lapu was only mentioned once in the Pigafetta account of the expedition, of the Magellan Elcano expedition. And what happened there? Uh, if you're going to look at it, uh, the chieftains wanted to. Uh, bow down to Humabon. 
even in Mactan, there's one chieftain, Zula, who wanted to bow to him. But what happened? According to many accounts, or to some, to some interpretations, Lapu-Lapu was a more uh, was, was a more adept military leader than Humabon. He might be stronger. That's why he had the balls to refuse Humabon. And of course, what happened? Humabon told Magellan, Oh, look at this guy. Diba sabi mo, you will fight for me? Oh, you know, Patricia, a lot of people are saying, you know, the Cebuano chieftain, Humabon, was utu-utu to Magellan. That's far from the truth. You see how adept in politics. In fact, I always say, huh, Patricia, that this guy, Humabon, is the quintessential Filipino politician. This guy knows the tricks of politics that the politicians have today. Huh? So, he was savvy. Naningil, naningil agad si Humabon. He told Magellan about Lapu-Lapu. And so Lapu-Lapu, Magellan was so, you know, the first baptism was into his head and invincibility that the God was on his side and told Humabon, you know, guy, I will fight them and uh, you don't have to help me. Just stay in your boat. Watch and learn. Watch and learn. Stay in your boats. And so, there were two attacks actually. Uh, as we now see, uh, uh, Resil Mohamed emphasizes now that there are two attacks in Mactan. And there were attacks where the houses were burned. And of course, that angered the Mactanons. According to the Pigafetta account, and again, see, the Datu si Lapu-Lapu was only mentioned once. But uh, he was the leader of those people. There was an interpreter, an Arab, I think a Muslim, sorry, a Muslim interpreter. He was the one interpreting. And this Muslim trader was actually the one who told Humabon to be friends with Mag Magellan because Magellan was saying the truth about the, the greatest empire. And he was also the one, I think, talking to, to the people of Mactan. And that's, the, the, that, that's I, I don't know if there's lost in trans translation, Patricia, somewhere along the way. But of course, what happened was the people of Magellan, through the Muslim, was telling the people of Mactan, if you do not be friend, if you do not befriend us, if you do not accept us, we are going to, you know, we, we, you, you will taste the uh, the the uh, you will taste how our lances wound, how our swords wound. But the people of Mactan answered them, you know, uh, we have, uh, don't, ano, parang, we, 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 our lances are forged, our lances, even if they're bamboo, were forged in fire. And so, what happened was, this is so funny. The people of Mactan asked Magellan to fight them in the morning. That's that's uh, using your coconut strategy. So what happened was Magellan followed Lapu Lapu. <laughs> but before that, I'll tell you something. There are accounts where, and this is a contentious, contentious issue, wherein Lapu Lapu was said. To, uh, was uh, was believed to have said Lapu Lapu was believed to have said that um, I will accept the King of Spain or we will accept the King of Spain but we will not kiss the hand of that Humabun so you see there's an internal conflict here now uh, 
I was talking to my friend Ian Alfonso of the National Quincentennial Committee. We have to be clear that it was not Lapu-Lapu was recorded to have said it according to the documents, but the people of Mactan. But, you know, I, I assume that the leader of Mactan was Lapu-Lapu, so he was the one who said it. And he was the one who want, uh, because you can say that it's probably Zula, because there are two chieftains in Mactan. It was probably Zula who would accept the king of Spain. But I think Zula accepted Humabon. But, you know, I will just put it at rest. And people are saying, you know, Lapu-Lapu is not a hero. Because he was just fighting for personal interests. Now, later on, I'll talk to you about the significance. I will answer that question. Is Lapu-Lapu not a hero anymore because of that? We will see. But again, this is what happened, right? They came in the morning when it was high tide, Patricia. High tide! And so, of course, you know, the Sugbo, di ba? Sugbo ang tawag sa Sugbo kasi the Sugbo is the place near the shore that is rocky. So you have to go down your boats, no? Sugbo to, to walk to the shore. And that is also what happened in Mactan. In Matan, according to Pigafetta. Their boats cannot go to the shore, no? Uh, and then what happened was, you know, if you're going to 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 go to Punta, is it Punta Enganyo, Enganyo, Punta Enganyo, which is the Devil's Point, because Lapu-Lapu is a devil, according to the Spaniards, Punta Enganyo, Lapu-Lapu is a devil, you know, devil. Ah, uh, he killed Magellan, the holy man, devil. Okay, makita nyo na papasok yung ano, yung yung shore. So they will trap Magellan. And then Pigafetta said, 1,500 Mactanons attack them from three sides. Which is the triangle strategy of our ancestors. Baklad. You know Baklad when you trap the fish. is that you also trap Magellan and his men. 49 men versus 1,500. And they were using their coconut. Oh. Now, I tell you, according to Bigafeta, they were fighting for more than an hour. If they were 49 versus 1,500 and they were fighting for about more than an hour, just say, tell me, 45 minutes, that means that the Spaniards were also able to fight back. And in fact, not all of them were killed. I mean, if I have 1,500 troops, it was so easy to kill everybody. But there are a lot of Spaniards who are able to return to their ships. Of course, there, we do not think that there was a one-on-one -on -one battle with Lapu-Lapu that was not stated in the account. One-on-one -on -one battle with Lapu-Lapu and Magellan. And Magellan, people are saying, Lapu-Lapu is not a hero because he did not kill Magellan. Does he need to kill Magellan personally? He was the leader of Mactan. When a battle is won in war, you credit the general. You credit MacArthur. You credit Aguinaldo. So I don't know. It's very petty. Como hindi niya pinatay si Lapu-Lapu, ni Lapu-Lapu si Magellan personally. And we do not know that because it was not in the records. We just know that na pinagtulungan. You read the Pigapeta because uh, people read the Pigapeta because I will not uh, detail everything. Basta pinagtulungan. And of course Magellan died and we had victory. So... Yun ang, yun ang story. That's, that's the long and short story. I'm, I'm sorry if I talk for uh, many, many minutes. But basically, that's the story of the Battle of Mactan. That's why, Patricia, no, we, we talk about art. Uh, we have better paintings of the Battle of Mactan, wherein Magellan was being crowded. And they, they don't, they're not clean machos anymore. You know, a lot of the depiction of the Battle of Mactan, Patricia, they, they were clean machos. You know? They were painted. They were described as painted. The Visayans have painted uh, warriors on the Pintados, on the Vatican, because they have many Batek. Okay? So, yeah, like Matayos B. Garcia, in the Pasisi Hill, uh, is a very good depiction. It won the National Quincentennial. Art contest. Uh -huh. 
So, where you go, if you're going to look at it, uh, that's the story of the Battle of Mactan. And of course, there are other things in the story after the Cebu massacre, which you did, you, Cebuanos did. You know why you killed Magellan? I, di ba Magellan was killed already? And then the Cebuanos killed the next leaders, Juau Serrano and Duarte Barbosa. There were many uh, theories, uh, there are many stories in the accounts. So one is because Enrique de Malaca, the slave of Magellan who knew Malay and interpreted for them and talking to all these kings who knew Malay. He was not a Filipino, by the way. Uh, do, not, do not say that he was a Filipino. He was Malayan from Sumatra or Sumatra, Indonesia or from, what's that place? Malaka in Malaysia now. Uh, he was supposed to be a, he has a slave of Magellan, but when you, when the, the slave owner dies, he's free. But Duarte Barbosa and Serrano did not want him to be free because they needed him to complete the trip and talk to the Malays. And so they said that he plotted and talked to Humabon to kill the leaders of Spain. Number one. Number two, it was also said that there was rape or there was sex sexual intercourse between the Spaniards and the women which made the male mad. Either it's rape or sex because the Spaniards were denying that it was forced. You know, when the uh, Patricia, when the Elcano came to the shores of Cebu and then the Spaniards came out and people were saying, oh, they're so gua People were saying no to Queen Centennial because it's it's bad celebration. But the Queen Centennial, the problem was when when the Spaniards came out and the people of the Philippines saw the Spaniards, they were saying, uh, conquer us again, conquer us again. I'm, jo I'm joking, of course. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a joke. But what I'm saying here is this. Um, there's another angle to this, the massacre. Was that because Raja Humabon, who was not stupid, now wants to make amends with Lapu-Lapu for accepting Magellan. And so, so that he wouldn't be blamed for the battle and so that there would be harmony in Cebu. They have to finish off the leaders. And that is when the remaining crew of the Magellan Elcano expedition sailed to Molucas and eventually to complete the first circumnavigation of the world, the uh, uh, scientific achievement of humankind. Uh, I'm sorry, Patricia, if I got so excited telling the story of the Battle of Mactan. You have to see it in the context of world history and local history, local politics as well. Well, it's actually very interesting how something locally significant has such a huge impact now. Um, in the global concept or in the global context because what's happening in one small island in Cebu has a huge impact on the world actually, yes. right? And then remember, uh, Patricia, now remember that uh, Cebu, even in 1521, was already global because of the trade. That's how important Cebu. We have to emphasize the, the importance of Cebu as a global power. Not global power, sorry, but as yes. a global player. Okay? Yes. Uh -oh. Which is why Ceb the Cebuano culture of having this tabo or the trade in itself, no? and we have so many very, very good Cebuano traders, it's, it really co goes all the way back through history, no? Um, Sir, we have one of the more, you know, follow-up questions now, because you mentioned this a while ago about the question or the issue that we need to address about Lapu-Lapu being considered a hero or not. Kasi yun nga, di ba? We've been, some people can be so petty about it and they say na oh, he didn't even really kill Magellan personally, so he's yeah. not the one who's supposed to be credited for the, for the victory. Um, how, how do you go about this ba in history? And on a very, on a very specialized and very experienced perspective,
way because it's always very different when we when you look at it at a layman's perspective for somebody who does not have much um in-depth knowledge on history of course you're just gonna look at it and of course because our main our main um perspectives is based on pictures paintings or how yeah how the Battle of Makan is actually being um, portrayed, diba? Like when we see it na sa mga pagsasadula, when we see it, how they're being played out in theaters, in movies, in short clips. So, is Lapu-Lapu -Lapu really considered a hero? Or, yeah. you know, um, does, it re does he really have to have killed Magellan personally for him to be considered a hero? Okay. Uh... That's a very interesting question, and I'm going to address this. He is, again, as I said, he is a hero, even if he, there was no record that he killed Magellan personally because he was the leader of Mactan who killed Magellan and his men. That's one. The other thing about, the other contention is that Malapulapu is not a hero anymore because he was fighting for local politics, not for sovereignty, and not for independence, and not for, because, you know, in Mactan Island, you know, uh, remember, there's a song of Yoyoy, right? Uh, Mactan Island, we could not grab, because Lapu-Lapu is very hard. You see? Very hard. Okay, now, I have to say this. Ah, uh, it, it appears that there was an internal problem and Lap Magellan just became a victim of that internal problem in Cebu. But what was Magellan actually doing in introducing the idea to Humabon that he can be king of kings was to actually destroy and alter the existing uh, arrangement of the communities in the Philippines, specifically in the, in the, in, in, in the area of Cebu and Mactan. And what is this uh, arrangement? That yes, there could be alliances in the Sandugo, but that doesn't mean that they will surrender in an autocratic way to one leader. Each Datu in each kingdom or Bayan is different and have their and their powers are intact. That means that Lapu-Lapu's uh, Lapu-Lapu was insulted. Because he's ready to accept the king of Spain, maybe as a partner, not necessarily as a colonizer. But what he did not want was that Humabon was telling people to follow him and to, and to, and to take his authority. So now, if you're going to look at this, you will now put it in, a, in, a, in another angle. Yes, Lapu-Lapu might not have fought for uh, automatically the freedom of Mactan. His pride was wounded by the, the battle with Humabon. But in a larger context, you will see that the Spaniards were altering and interfering with the affairs and the order of our society. And Lapu-Lapu did not like that. And so, if we in the present can give meaning to what Lapu-Lapu did and still make him relevant, Patricia, Pharaons, you know, I thought you came from the family of pharaohs. I'm just joking. <laughs> if, if, if you're going to look at it, no, uh, just to finish, Lapu-Lapu is still significant because he was against foreign interference of our affairs. So, in the present, if you read them in the present, we should be against any foreigner who wants to intrude with our way of life. That is for me. And, and for me, I'm sorry to say, that for me is still about sovereignty. That for me is still about freedom. Even if it's not easily seen. And we in the present could interpret heroism of people in the past, right? And also, the third part of Lapu-Lapu's heroism, Patricia, for Arons, okay, is that 
Why is Lapu-Lapu a national hero? If it's just the hero of Mactan. Right? He did it for Mactan. There was no Philippines at that time, they said. I do not want to accept. I do not want to accept Lapu-Lapu. Because he's just Cebuano. And he just fought for Mactan. This is what I'm going to tell you. Lapu-Lapu was significant because the founders of the nation made them a symbol, a mascot against the Spaniards because they were, they were highlighting Lapu-Lapu in such a way that tells the Spaniards, look, we can be victorious against you. Mariano Ponce, the founder of the La Solidaridad, made Kalipulaco, the other name of Lapu-Lapu in other accounts, his pen name, Kalipulaco. One Luna wanted to paint the death of Magellan and he wanted to entitle it according to his letter to Rizal, Victory of Lapu-Lapu. Rizal talked about Lapu-Lapu in his writings, especially the annotations in the Morga. Emilio Asinto, so propaganda movement, and then the Katipunan, Emilio Asinto wrote an essay gising ng mga Tagalog and told the Tagalogs, which are the Filipinos, Tagailog, we are all river people, telling them, why are you, wake up, why are you letting yourselves be, be you know, uh, oppressed by the Spaniards? Where is the blood of Kalipulaco? Where is the blood of Kalipulaco? The vibrant king of Mactan who killed the treacherous Magellan. And then, you have the Declaration of Philippine Independence, June 12, 1898, which was initiated by Emilio Aguinaldo and was written by Ambrosio Rianzares Bautista of Binyan, who wrote the story of Lapu-Lapu as part of our story to freedom. So if you're going to look at it, Patricia, why, was, why are we celebrating Lapu-Lapu? Why not Sharif Kabungsuan? Why not uh, Abu Bakar? Why not any other people in the pre-colonial history? Simple. Because what we're saying here is that Lapu-Lapu became the symbol for the founders of the nation to create the nation, to become victorious against the Spaniards, to inspire people to fight for their country for the nation that we wanted to build. So in, this, in these three ways, that number one, and to just summarize, why Lapu-Lapu is still a hero? Number one, we credit the general for the victory of the troops. Number two, Lapu-Lapu, it might be about internal conflict, but it is still about Magellan interfering in our affairs. And that's why Lapu-Lapu is a hero against foreign domination of internal affairs, which is still sovereignty. And number three, and number three, because um, Lapu-Lapu was used to create the nation, and that's why he qualifies as a national hero. I, I hope that is clear, Miss Patricia. Yeah, that's and actually by the way, very clear. And by the way, nice I thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Bo. Um, I, I totally agree with that because you know how, okay, um, in uh, general, a hero is um, a hero is described as a person who is admired or idealized for courage, diba? And I think one of the best traits that we get out of Lapu-Lapu is the fact that he has inspired us to stand our ground. And that is what has stirred the passion and the patriotism of our our fellow Filipinos, and of course, the other heroes who came after him. And right. he stirred that inspiration. Yeah. And speaking of inspiration, since we're already going there, and after all of this ha happening, now the, we are celebrating the 500th year of the Battle of Mactan, and this is the fourth Lapu-Lapu day. We thank actually the, the LGUs for actually giving such significance to a hero and to someone who is inspiring, who is very inspiring. I'd like to ask you, sir, how is this still relevant for us? Because, you know, when we look at it, when we look at it, it's been 500 years. Yeah. It's been 500 years and people will always say, oh, you know, it's such a very rapidly changing world. Everything's yeah. happening so fast. 
how is something 500 years ago still significant today? Well, because the victory of Mac victory at Mactan in the province of Cebu huh, is uh, telling us that you just don't fight. You know, like just don't fight without thinking. You don't fight to lose. You have to think of strategies which our ancestors did to win. You don't fight blindly. There are some people who tell us, let us fight blindly. We should use our strengths. We should think of how to win, not just of, 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 of fighting. And sometimes, the knowledge of when to fight and when not to fight directly will lead you to victory. I think that's my interpretation of that. Yeah, Use your coconut in fighting, number one. Number two, the victory, of Mactan tells, victory at Mactan tells us that we Filipinos, we can use Lapu-Lapu as a symbol. And again, you can say this is just it's not historical, but you can say it's interpretative already. But what is history without Saisai, Iha? I'm sorry if I use the word Iha. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, uh, I just felt you're younger than me. No, no offense taken. So is Paniola. Yeah. So it's not. <laughs> yes. Anyway, uh, when we look at Lapu-Lapu and how he fought the Spaniards where supposedly they were burning houses, they were using cannons. You know, I think that is where that, that, that uh, using cannons, that is where they invented the word canonization. You know, when you canonize the, I'm joking, of course. No? Uh, but uh, seriously, uh, the, the, the Spaniards are a formidable army, I mean, formidable force. They had weapons, they had cannons. But what happened? We were able to win because of our strategy. And that means that whatever difficult, challenging enemy that we have, enemies of freedom, like tyrants, like superpowers, like COVID-19, it would be difficult. We have to think a lot how to win. But in the many, many struggles that we have had, from Mactan, we won. After 333 years of Spanish colonialism, we won. After the Japanese occupation, the violent Japanese occupation, our guerrillas won in Cebu, had contributed much to the guerrilla movement. When the Cebu when the, when, when, the, when, when, when the Americans were liberating Cebu, they were welcomed by the guerrillas who already liberated it. And whatever it is that we have now, we find, find ourselves, we, uh, the challenges we find ourselves in, like the pandemic. You know, it would be difficult. A lot of people had already died. A lot of people kasi did not learn their lesson that COVID-19 is real. And now you see it's getting closer to you. Relatives, friends, some of them are dying. Some of them, you know, if you are you get hospitalized in, with COVID-19, even if you survive, it will kill your, your savings. We're in such a difficult time now. People are crying. People are dying. People are suffering. But let us not lose hope. We have to be reminded that in Mactan, we were victorious even with a formidable, challenging enemy. And that we should remind ourselves, we should just keep on fighting intelligently, listen to science, to other countries, we use diplomacy because we have strength in diplomacy. And we will win. We will survive this. Makakalampas din tayo dito. 
we will have new challenges after that. Life is not perfect. But the people at Mactan, Cebu province, told us or are, are, are reminding us, mananalo tayo. We will win. Thank you, Paul. That was actually very eye-opening. Um, so we're almost wrapping up and we're wrapping up the whole um, discussion that we're having right now. And you've, we've already had a lot of points to ponder on about the Battle of Mactan, its significance, is Lapu-Lapu really a hero, and all of these things that so you've already provided context for it. I just want to ask you, um, do you have a message for the people of Cebu? You know, I'm just saying goodbye to my roommate, Rex Sikat, who won the monument contest uh, for Lapu-Lapu's monument. So I'm saying hi, goodbye, Rex. Congratulations, Paul. Yeah, congrats, <laughs> Dao. It's a pleasure to... Why don't you greet them a bit? Come, come, come. Wait a minute. Uh, this is very important. He's an important guy. He's from yes, my well. province, Bamban Tarlac. And, Please join uh, us. Please join us. Join us a bit. Uh, I'll just show you I'll just show you him because we're wrapping up. And I just want I'm very proud of this guy. He's from Bamban Tarlac, not from Tarlac City, you know, because he was credited as coming from Tarlac. He studied in Tarlac City. But this is uh, Rex Sikat uh, Jr., is that right? Yeah, Rex Sikat Jr. from Bamban uh, Tarlac. And he won the Lapu-Lapu Monument Contest of the National Quincentennial Committee. Wow. So they will uh, build a memorial a museum for Lapu-Lapu and his uh, <laughs> near the near the uh, what they call this near the Punta, in the Punta Engaño and the, the centerpiece of that museum would be his uh, sculpture. So uh, how do what do you feel na ikaw ay nanalo dito? I just maybe we can get a few words from him. Yeah, I'm so proud. Uh, to to be the designer and the winner of the national monument because uh, I think this would be a legacy uh, and a a gift in part mm -hmm. to the to the community and to the yeah you are able to imagine it's design. I'm proud of it because it's from the Philippines. Look, this is the and monument. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, that's the shrine that will be uh, erected. And you have here, and the uh, watch at Maktan. Watch of Maktan. That's his design. Okay. Thank you, Rex. Oh, Thank you, Paul, okay. Rex. Congratulations once again. Yeah. Salamat. So there you go. Um, Sir Shao, going yeah. back po. Yeah. Um, Ito na. Thank you for introducing us to your friend. Huh? Thank you for introducing us to him. I yeah, see. It's very, it's very wonderful to see other people, you know, who are involved in this celebration. And it just goes to show, you know, that Lapu Lapu, the Battle of Mactan, and all of that is such a significance to the Cebuanos, significant yes, to the yeah, whole country, yeah, significant to every Filipino. So going back po, I was going to ask you this question. What is your message for the people of Cebu and for everyone else who's watching us right now, whether um, on Facebook or wherever platform they're watching us from? Ano po yung message niyo po sa kanila? Uh, remember this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to my fellow, my fellow Filipinos, to the Cebuanos, and to my countrymen, mga kababayan ko, uh, I've been talking in English because I respect the preference of English of many Cebuanos, pero let allow me to talk to you in Filipino. Uh, mga kababayan, ako ay natutuwa na naabutan natin ang panahong ito. Ito ang panahon ng Queen Centenario. Limandaang taon. Hindi natin maabutan ang mga susunod na komemorasyon. Maaaring hindi na natin ang maabutan. This is a once in a lifetime event. Kaya naman ang sinasabi ko, pinakita natin sa maktan na magtatagumpay tayo sa kahit anumang hamon. 
Pero tandaan natin na nagtatagumpay tayo dahil tayo ay nakikipagkapwa tao. No? We go back to how our ancestors treated Magellan's uh, crew in Giwan. Magkaugnay ang Giwan at Mactan at Cebu. Oh? Bakit? Let me explain. When you fight for something, there's always a feeling of love there. Diba? You will not fight if you will not love. And that love stems from pakikipagkapwa-tao. You're fighting for the oppressed. You're fighting for the people who are down there. You're fighting for the poor. You're fighting for those who cannot defend themselves. We fight this pandemic. Nilalabanan natin ang pandemic na ito. Bakit? Kasi umiibig tayo sa kapwa natin. Kasi umiibig tayo sa bayan natin. Kaya, the last reminder I will tell you to sum it all up. Lapu-Lapu fought because in many ways he had love. Diba? He was protecting the interest of Mactan because he loved this Mactan. In the challenges that we face today, we will become victorious if we decide to love each other, to give, to contribute, even the little things that you do like proper hand washing, alcohol, face mask, huh? face shield. I will tell you, this is a guarantee that this will save your lives and this will save the life of other people. So what I'm saying here is, if we give our share in taking care of each other, we will get through this. We believe in science. We will think about ways how to fight. We will be like Lapu-Lapu. Magiging katulad tayo ni Lapu-Lapu na hindi lang lumaban, kundi lumaban ng nag-iisip. At minamahal at nakikipagkapwa-tao siya. Kaya siya nanalo. So, I guess that's, uh, uh, that's my message. There would be uh, Ireneo Salazar, a German-Filipino friend of mine, encapsulated this, and I don't want to get the credit from him, encapsulated this in simple terms. Because our theme of the Quincentennial is victory and humanity. But he said, Irineo Salazar said, before victory, there should be humanity. Before victory, there should be humanity. Bago ang tagumpay, pakikipagkapwa-tao muna. Dagang salamat, Subbo. Thank you so much, Professor Shao Chua. Thank you so much for giving us such a wonderful input on the Battle of Makta and the Quincentennial celebration and the significance of Lapu-Lapu today. I think one of the best reasons why we are celebrating today is that we always go, go back to the fact that Lapu-Lapu is not just a hero, he is an inspiration. It still stirs so much passion and love for the Filipino people. And I think that's what makes him so relevant up to today. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to... you want to say something, sir? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. sorry. I, my, my, uh, there are lots of friends that I want to greet, but I cannot greet you all. Dagang <laughs> salamat sa inyong lahat. You're all here watching in this uh, um, webinar. But I would like to greet... Uh, uh, Noela Mayi. Uh, I would also like to greet my mother, Vilma uh, Chua, and to my father, get well soon. 
And also, I would like to greet my uh, siblings, Michelle and Mark and Faye, and uh, the rest of the family. Uh, again, um, uh, like, uh, you know, we will get through this. Uh, we Filipinos, uh, these uh, challenges. And makipagkapwa tao tayo. Maraming salamat, Patricia. I'm sorry if I intervened with you saying goodbye. But I am, uh, I'm, I, it was an honor to talk to you today. No, no, no worries about it. It's fine. It's totally fine. And thank you. And also thank you to everyone who is watching us. Um, and I think that is it for today's session, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is the fourth Lapu Lapu Day celebration. And in line with the quincentennial celebration of the Battle of Mak my name is Patricia, and on behalf of the Cebu City Cultural and Historical Affairs Office or the Chow Office, we wish you all a wonderful day and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everyone, and maayong hapun sa tanat. Patricia and Sir Chow, before we leave uh, this afternoon's meeting, I would like to extend our thanks from the Cultural and Historical Affairs Office to you both for being with us this afternoon. Uh, we already um, told Ms. Lowell, actually, we are giving her a token. But for you both, we are also giving out um, these tote bags for you, Chingai, for you, Patricia, and for you, Sir Shao. Uh, yeah, this is a tote you. bag. Thank you for, uh, uh, thank you for uh, the, uh, that you were able to instantly send it to me, even if it's remote. Yes. Wow. Uh, thank you so much. It's magic, right? But magic. because I was there two weeks ago, Thank you so much. So I received another one. Thank you. Thank you. Patricia, we will be sending so out much. it to you as well. So thank you sure, very I'm much to you both. And we hope to see you more engagements with you, Sir Shao, in the future. Good afternoon. Mayroon hapon sa inyo tanan. Mayroon hapon sa tanan.